If you are watching this video, you are probably already a coffee drinker, or probably somebody told you that coffee is good for you, and now you are contemplating if you should start drinking coffee. Honestly, coffee is such a controversial drink, and there is so much information out there about its health benefits, safety, risks that it can be confusing for a lot of us. I had recently called upon you guys on YouTube to ask me your questions about coffee, and I've picked up the most common questions to answer in today's video. If coffee is good or bad for us, its effect on our weight. and other health conditions does it affect our sleep what kind of coffee and how much coffee should you be drinking i've got you covered if you are interested keep watching Hi everyone my name is Nirupama I am a PhD in food science and a certified nutrition coach all the information in this video is based on available scientific evidence i'll link a few papers in the description box in case you are interested let's get started Except decaf, every other variety of coffee, be it light roast, dark roast, or instant coffee, has caffeine in it, and caffeine has been studied for both its positive and negative health impacts. Let's start by looking at the positives of caffeine. Caffeine in coffee stimulates our brain and makes us more alert. Caffeine blocks the function of the neurotransmitter adenosine. When adenosine cannot bind to its receptor, it results in us feeling less tired, more wakeful and more focused. There are several theories suggesting how coffee might help reduce the risk of cognitive decline, dementia and Alzheimer's. One theory suggests that the caffeine in coffee helps prevent the build up of the beta amyloid plaque that is responsible for the onset and progression of Alzheimer's. Some studies have shown that coffee helps reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes and it also activates neurotransmitters that control our mood and reduce depression. All kinds of coffee, be it light or dark roast or even instant coffee contain antioxidants in them that can have cardio protective benefits on our health although coffee has potential health benefits it has also earned a negative rap for causing anxiety also known as caffeine jitters in some people coffee is also known to affect our nighttime sleep it is recommended to have the last cup of coffee at least 6 hours before our bedtime coffee stimulates the release of gastrin and gastric acid in our stomach hence complaints of acidity and reflux are quite common after coffee consumption consumption coffee may increase your blood pressure and your heart rate consumption of coffee might affect the absorption of certain medicines so certain medications might require you to avoid coffee altogether and lastly coffee can be addictive and people do experience withdrawal symptoms when they stop drinking coffee it is important to add here that the negative effects of coffee varies from person to person it depends on our body type and our tolerance to coffee some people might drink many cups of coffee in a day without experiencing any symptoms while some of us might feel restless and anxious or experience acidity and gastric reflux after drinking just one cup of coffee lot of times these symptoms disappear as our tolerance to coffee increases in general if you feel any kind of uneasiness acidity or reflux post coffee consumption it is best to avoid drinking coffee this hugely varies on the kind of coffee that you consume a single shot espresso with no milk and no sugar contains as little as 3 calories a medium cappuccino or a small size tumbler of filter coffee will contain anywhere between 80 to 150 calories depending on how much sugar you add or the kind of milk that you use if it's full fat or skim milk something like a starbucks frappuccino can contain as high as 300 calories when you're adding ingredients like whipped cream and chocolate syrup to it Except decaf, every other variety of coffee, be it light roast, dark roast, or instant coffee, has caffeine in it. And when it comes to caffeine, the safe upper limit for caffeine consumption is 400 milligrams per day, which comes down to around three to four cups of coffee per day. The average amount of caffeine in a cup of coffee is around 100 milligrams. Something like a cup of light roast coffee might have more than 100 milligrams caffeine, and something like an instant coffee might have less than 100 milligrams caffeine. So coffee does stimulate our resting metabolism which means that it increases our energy expenditure and the calories we burn at rest. However for effective weight loss coffee must be consumed in combination with exercise. Studies have shown that when moderate doses of caffeine in the range of 100 to 200 mg which is about 1 to 2 cups of coffee is consumed 30 minutes prior to exercise it increases the exercise performance as well as the energy burn and fat oxidation in healthy individuals. 
foods. However, it is important to remember here that all these studies showing the fat burning effects of coffee have been done using black coffee which contains no milk, no sugar and hardly any calories. It would be wrong to expect the same results from a cup of your regular coffee or cappuccino that contains around 100 to 150 calories. It is popular opinion that drinking coffee first thing in the morning might elevate our cortisol levels and elevated cortisol is related to weight gain, high blood sugar and hypertension in the long run. Also some people experience acidity and gastric reflux when they drink coffee on an empty stomach first thing in the morning. Although these claims make sense, there is no solid scientific evidence substantiating this. So if you're someone facing digestive issues like acidity, bloating, reflux or IBS, it is best to avoid coffee first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. You could have it later in the day after your breakfast. If coffee on an empty stomach doesn't bother you, you could continue drinking your coffee in the morning. Here is what I think. If you're a non-coffee drinker, you're not really missing out on much and there is no need to start drinking coffee. Yes, some health benefits of coffee have been reported, but the number of studies done on humans is very very limited which makes it difficult to establish a cause-effect relationship. Meaning we cannot say for sure that drinking coffee will prevent Alzheimer's or diabetes with 100% surety. So if you want to start drinking coffee for its nutritional or health benefits, don't bother about it as there are plenty of other foods offering the same health benefits with lower risks. If you're somebody who enjoys an occasional cup of coffee or if it helps improve your focus or attention span, sure you can go ahead and enjoy that occasional cup of coffee. If you are a voracious coffee drinker, be aware of any negative health consequences or sleep disturbances and try to stay within the maximum upper limit of coffee consumption per day. That's all from me for today's video. I hope I could get to most of your questions regarding coffee. Before I sign off, I'm very excited to announce the launch of my personal coaching website, simplifycoach.com. This website contains all the details for booking a personal consultation with me. I'll leave a link in the description box in case you want to get in touch. If you like today's video, do give it a thumbs up. I'll see you guys in my next video. Take care until then. Bye.